I was looking for a gravity-fed type of water filtration system a while back, and on Facebook I noticed an ad. It said, our filter is lab tested and NSF certified. So I went to the website and uh, nothing about NSF on that site. So I went to the NSF site and tried to look it up and they're not certified. So I went back to the Facebook ad and I said, what's the deal with this? I can't find the certificate. He said, well, his, his filters are certified, uh, NSF certified under his private manufacturer's name and he's working on getting it under his company name and he doesn't reveal the private manufacturer's name to the public. So I can't look that up and he doesn't have a certificate. So the thing is, there's about 600 comments on that ad and most of the people are just raving about how, how they love the water, how it tastes so good and they feel safe now and this kind of thing. And they don't have a clue about what they're drinking. There's no verification of anything that he's said is true. Uh, so that inspired me to do this video. Now, if you're looking for a gravity fed filter type of filter, like a Berkey filter or to replace the filter you already have, um, then you're going to find some confusion out there on these sites, a misleading information, whether it's intentional or not. I want to help you sort all this out so you can find a filter that you feel you can trust. I've done a lot of research on that. I'll be using these notes uh, for, for this video. In fact, I called and, and have been emailing back and forth NSF, and I spoke to IATMO for a while. So what I'm going to do is answer basically five questions d throughout this video. One, is it safe to drink filtered pond water, river water, lake water? Two, will chlorine kill all microbiological contaminants? Three, what determines the lifespan of a filter? Four, is a filter being certified the same thing as being verified or meeting NSF protocol? Five, can a company claim that their filter is NSF certified, but the certification does not include reducing harmful contaminants? So I'll be covering a lot more than this as well. NSF and ANSI are two nonprofit organizations that got together to create standards for water filters and other products to ensure they're safe and effective. Now, they're the gold standard for this kind of thing. The, uh, the standards are in categories, and I listed many under the description for you to check out. They read like NSF slash ANSI and a number, the category number. Now, I'll be referring to these by just saying the number or NSF and the number. There's three categories that, that uh, stand out most important for a filter like I'll be talking about, uh, as at, at least for the minimum of what most people want. And that's 42, 53, and 401. NSF 42 has to do with specific aesthetic related contaminant reduction claims like chlorine and particulates, taste and odor. These are considered non-health related. 53 offers over 50 contaminant reduction claims that are health related like lead, mercury, arsenic, and harmful chemicals. Uh, and 53 has nothing to do with the number of contaminants, that's just the category name. Uh, 401 has to do with reduction of things like prescription drugs, pesticides, herbicides, and chemicals. Now when you go to a website looking for a filter, you might notice them saying something like, certified to NSF standard 53. And you might think, well that's the one I want, over 50 contaminants uh, reduced, I'll go for it. But hold on, that's not how it works. In fact, the, there, there are no federal regulations for these, so they don't have to get certified. If they decide to, what they'll do is they'll approach the testing facility and ask them to test their filter's effectiveness for reducing or removing certain contaminants. And the manufacturer gets to pick what contaminants they want tested. And the reason I'm telling you all this is because it can be for as little as one contaminant and they can post on their site that they're certified to NSF standard 53. Uh, and, but they also have to meet non-testing type of requirements such as material safety and design and stuff. But it can be as little as one contaminant can claim that. So you, you clearly need more information. And uh, you need to get a hold of that certificate and find out how many uh, contaminants, what's being reduced, and so on. And so the first step you have to do is just find out who tested and certified it. The three leading accredited organizations that test and certify are NSF and IAPMO, which is IAPMO, and WQA. Now NSF is really called NSF International and you don't want to confuse this with National Science Foundation when you're Googling it. A certificate from any one of these organizations are all of equal value according to NSF. If a manufacturer uses one of these organizations, they'll be proud. It costs a lot of money. It took a lot of time. They'll, they'll post it right on their site. It'll probably If it's IATMO, it'll say IATMO certified NSF standard 53 or something like that. Now, I uh, put links under the description to those organizations, so all you need to do is find out which one belongs to what, click that link, and then type in the filter name, and find out what that certificate says. Now, there are many third-party labs that test to NSF standards instead of certifying. It probably saves the company a lot of money. And in that case, you still want to get a hold of that lab report. 
And if they, if you know, if they don't have that available and they only like type it on the website uh, and you cannot find that lab report, I just move on to another filter. Now NSF and IATMO, WQA, I think WQA, uh, they, they also test to NSF standards, which is something that I just learned about a week ago. I thought they only certified, but they also test. So you have to make sure, look at the bottom of the page and see if it is uh, it, certification, is certifying, or if it's just testing to NSF standards. Now when you're searching for a water filter, you're going to find exaggeration, conflicting information, misleading information, scare tactics, and, and so on. And uh, so I want to help you sort all this out so you can find a filter you can trust. I'm going to do this by going over the kinds of things you might see online. I saw one filter ad that said has been tested for the reduction of substances as specified in NSF 53. Now there's nothing wrong with that. Just understand that when it's tested to or verified to or meets NSF protocol, that does not mean it's certified. It needs to say certified. On the other hand, there's an ad that I saw that said NSF certified. And that's not good enough because they need to say what standard is certified to. You might have someone go on there and say, well, you know, NS certified, they feel like the whole thing is certified and ready to go and safe. Another ad said NSF certified water filters, 4253401. And that's, that's good. That's the way it should say it. I uh, went to NSF and verified that it is certified, but for 53, just for two contaminants out of over 50 available. Now, sometimes you'll see three, four, or five would appear to be contaminants, but they're headings for many contaminants, like VOC. There are many contaminants under that. Uh, some sites you'll see at the bottom where the footnotes are, it'll say, do not use water from unsafe or unknown sources. And just before that, they might talk about how their filter will filter pond water, lake water, streams, creeks, so conflicting information. I've noticed more and more filters out there that are certified, both certified to NSF standards and tested to NSF standards. And when this is the case, it seems like they're certified to 42 and or 372. That's aesthetics like chlorine and the lack of lead in their container. But for the things that really matter, like contaminants, it's lab tested too. And sometimes they'll post it uh, like the uh, 372 here, and then they'll post the, the uh, contaminants that are lab tested right next to it. And you'll think that that's certified for that. So now that I'm telling you that, maybe you, you know, try to be more aware of that. It's very important to understand what determines the lifespan of a water filter, uh, filter capacity, gallon capacity. Otherwise, you might end up with a filter that's filtering far fewer contaminants than you thought for a much shorter period of time. Individual contaminants stop filtering so well to NSF specifications or at all at different points of time during the filtration process. For example, I'll be making these numbers up with my pretend filter. A chromium might not filter so well after 250 gallons, lead 300 gallons, mercury 400. One contaminant might filter really well up to about 5,000 gallons. So if you go to a site selling this filter, they're not going to show you those numbers. That, you know, they'll, they'll be in the lab report, but uh, you might see 5,000 gallons. And if you do, it might say each filter can last up to 5,000 gallons for specific contaminants as tested by third-party lab data. Well, this could be misleading or at best easily misunderstood because some, some people may have seen maybe the previous page that lists out 100 contaminants by a third-party lab and they think those are the specific contaminants. And uh, you don't think that they're gonna get all of those filtered for 5,000 gallons, when in fact, it's not filtering at 250, 300, 400, you know, and so on, different contaminants. Now, a company might disclose that uh, the 5,000 gallons is based on one contaminant, maybe like chlorine or something like this, uh, somewhere on the page. It might be kind of far down the page or easily uh, found. But uh, in either, either case, it could be very difficult to uh, understand exactly what's being said because that's the only number they see. They don't see the actual lifespan of the filter. Now, if, if, this, if this is actually certified to NSF standards, the lifespan's based on the lowest number that's been tested. Um, and I don't know how they do it. I think NSF, what they do is they take each individual contaminant and they run water through it and find out whichever one stops filtering the soonest. And that's the lifespan. If you look at my graph, of, uh, given the example I've given you about uh, the chromium and the lead and mercury, you can see that all the contaminants are being filtered when it's new. But at 250 gallons, one drops off. So that would be the lifespan of the filter. Now, so the, the moral of the story here is whenever you go to a site, and uh, the, one of the first questions you should ask yourself is, how long will this filter last filtering all of the contaminants claimed by the manufacturer? Um, and also, if it's NSF certified, the lifespan of the filter has to be tested to 200% of the stated capacity, which is really good, a lot of cushion there. 
If it's electronic, it tells you when to replace a filter, like with an RO system or something. That needs to be 120% of whatever the manufacturer's um, stated capacity is. If it's important for you to have a filter that's NSF certified, uh, like it is to me, then uh, you might want to use three criteria that I would use. Uh, number one, that it's certified NSF standards 42, 53, and 401. Number two, it's certified by one or more of the three organizations I talked about only. Number three, it's certified for a substantial number of contaminants and things you want reduced, not just two contaminants. Okay, so I looked at nine filters online, very popular filters. There's many more out there, but I looked at nine and I only found one that matched that criteria. I was surprised. I thought there would be a lot more than that. Now, um, I make no money from the manufacturer for this filter or any filters I talk about on this video. This filter is the Patriot Pier Ultimate Water Filtration System with a Nano Mesh Filter. Now, I'm not recommending this because I don't own it, but this would be a filter I would buy based on what I saw, the nine filters and the certifications. It says on their site, reduction rates are certified to 200 gallons by an ANSI certified independent laboratory using NSF standards. Well, that's what's missing on the pretend filter I was talking about earlier. The pretend one should say 250 gallons for, their, for the lifespan. Uh, it says up to 800 gallons for some contaminants. I, I don't know why they do that. Who cares? After 200 gallons, are you going to drink the next 600 gallons thinking, well, it's not filtering so well, but I'm okay with that. I don't know why they do that. Um, after you're done with this video, please look under description. I'll have a thing called updates. Any mistakes I made, I'll post it there. Any filters I find that are similar to this one, I'll post it. But I'm counting on you to help me out with this, to keep this updated. So if you see a filter meeting my strict criteria, only that criteria, with a gravity you know, fed type filter that I've, I've, I've been talking about, post it in the comments and I'll put it up there under update so people can stay updated on what's, uh, what's out there. And uh, if, you, if you happen to see one that is uh, tested to NSF standards by IATMO or NSF, I might consider putting that under updates as well. I trust, I think, those organizations better than other third-party labs. So is it safe to drink filtered pond water, river water, lake water, you know, creek water, that kind of thing? Well, I have to talk about NSF 53 and P231 to answer this. Many companies claim that their filter removes viruses and bacteria uh, because their filter is certified to or tested to NSF standard 53. Not 231, not 248, I'm talking about 53. Now, uh, 53 does talk about reducing harmful contaminants, but uh, it has nothing to do with virus and bacteria. Of the 50 contaminants I talked about at the beginning of the video that a, a filter company can challenge their filter to, none of those are virus and bacteria. NSF uh, emailed me on a few occasions reminding me because I, I kept asking them. They said it does not address the treatment of bacteria or viruses. The scope of the standard is for water sources that are microbiologically safe, such as municipal water. So your tap water, it's, been already, it's already been treated. Uh, P231 and 248 address reduction of viruses and bacteria, not 53. Now the only microbiological claim associated with standard 53 is cryptosporidium or O assist or cyst. The CDC says over 800,000 people get sick from cryptosporidium in the United States every year. If you have a compromised immune system, it's life-threatening. It can resist most common disinfectants, including chlorine, and can even be in municipal tap water that's been treated. And uh, I read somewhere that if you get your tap water from surface water like lakes or rivers, uh, the, it increases the odds of having that in your tap water. I, you should look up your um, water quality report, annual report for your water district. I looked up mine and there is a place for that cryptosporidium little section that says if you have, if you're on chemo or some kind of immune problem, you're supposed to talk to your doctor before drinking the tap water. So you might want to look at that. Now, if there's a cyst reduction claim for the filter, they're required to add language stating that the reduction is based on disinfected water that may contain filterable cysts. So if the cyst claim is made, it should be fairly safe because it's already been treated from your tap water or you treated it before you filtered it. So how can a filter company justify showing a video or pictures of putting river water or dirty water into one of these filters? Now, I've seen some reviews on these sites where people are pouring river water and lake water in, but on the bottom of the website for the filter, they have a disclaimer saying they're not responsible for anything these reviewers say about their filter. So can you filter dirty water in your system? And I say it is possible if you follow a protocol that, that I call SFS, 
stands for screen, filter, and sanitize. You take the dirty water and you screen it through a, a cotton t-shirt, maybe several times, or some kind of cotton cloth. Take that and pour it into your system, filter it, take that water, put it in the container, and boil it. That's your best way to deal with it. And if you can't boil it, you can use liquid chlorine bleach, unscented. Uh, I have a, a link to CDC under the description that tells you how to do it. Or you can use something like these aqua tabs, but it's best to boil it. So that's my suggestion on how to handle uh, river, lake, and creek water. Now, if you're concerned about a worst-case water scenario caused by a disaster, such as a cyber attack on our water infrastructure, uh, a portable filter that's tested to NSF 248 offers the ultimate protection. Now, this is the testing standard used by U.S. military for removal of viruses and bacteria, protozoa, sediment from worst-case murkiest water conditions. There will be more viruses and sewage and that type of thing in a, in a disaster situation. I would not use one of these gravity type of water filters for that type of, of water. Um, the ideal filter would be something that's versatile, uh, portable, doesn't require power, and will last a long time. My MSR Guardian purifier is an example of a filter tested to NSF 248. It's very expensive, but it'll filter 2,600 gallons. And uh, it just sits in my bug out bag as, as an insurance policy, basically. Uh, I have extra parts for it in case it breaks. There's another one by MSR that's gravity fed type. And uh, you, know, you put water in the bag, you put it up on a tree. It'll filter about 800 gallons. It's a little less money than the one I have. And it was developed for the United States military for challenging sources of fresh water virtually anywhere on Earth. And uh, see under the description for, for both of these and other portable filters that are tested at 231, which are very good filters as well, and they're also a lot less expensive. We bought a Berkey water filter back in 2010, 2011, somewhere back then. And we used it for 10 years, changing the filter out you know, over time on a regular basis until we could no longer find a Berkey filter for it. Some of you have experienced the same situation. So I started looking for other filters, and that's how I got the information for this video. But I also learned that, generally speaking, certified or not, these filters do, I think, a pretty good job, most of them, filtering tap water. I prefer it to be certified like the one I mentioned in the video. If you can find one that's also tested to P231, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll add it under the updates. Now, after researching gravity filters and getting disillusioned by some of the shenanigans played by these sites, I started searching for reverse osmosis water filters, and I learned that they do a better job filtering water. So we decided to buy an AquaTru reverse osmosis filter instead. It's certified to NSF 42, 53, 58, 401, and P473 by IATMO, and it's one of the most efficient RO systems out there. Now, I'll be doing a review on our AquaTru reverse osmosis countertop filter in the near future, so hit subscribe and notification if you want to see that. And if I've already done it, it'll, the link will pop up right here, right now. Uh, there's pros and cons to uh, gravity-fed and these systems, and I think the pros outweigh the cons by a lot. I still thought it was valuable to do this video, though, because I, I know some people can't afford the RO system or don't want one. And uh, so that's why I did this video. I'm hoping that this information has been helpful. Now, whether you decide on a gravity-fed type of water filtration system or reverse osmosis, uh, tested to NSF standards or certified to NSF standards, it's going to be a lot better than drinking unfiltered tap water. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and uh, share it, and don't forget to subscribe. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching.